Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. The truth about meditation. Hey, everybody, Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again, Salt Strong Unchurched. Talking about something that has absolutely changed my life for the better. It has decreased my anxiety. It has given me some amazing visions. And um, I've, I've had some great conversations, honestly, with God and Jesus through meditation. I've struggled with it. I certainly didn't understand it at first. And and I'm still just kind of struggle sometimes. I get restless. It's tough just to sit still for a long amount of time in peace and quiet for me because my mind starts racing. But when I do get it, like when I really take the time and just say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing this until it kind of happens or works. Meditation has been incredibly powerful. Uh, let's talk about first what it's not. I mean, meditation, you know, it can, it can mean a lot of things, a lot of different people. And I, I've seen some just super religious, like Christian people say, oh, meditation and yoga, all this stuff is worshiping Buddha. Sure. It could be if that's the, your intention for it. But I mean, also Jesus meditated. Jesus, I mean, the, the meditation has been used throughout centuries and it obviously is a form of prayer as well. Meditation. I mean, it's, it's discussed in the Bible. Uh, it doesn't just have to be what some people just think of, you know, someone sitting there on a on a yoga mat meditating and praying to Buddha. Uh, obviously, that's a whole different form of this. One of the books that completely changed everything for me with meditation was called The Surrender Experiment. Uh, Michael Singer, the guy's, um, it's one of the most fascinating stories. It's almost, it sounds like it's made up if you read it. It's this guy who was essentially a hippie that uh, no one thought probably would have done much, refused to wear shoes. I mean, literally still, even when he was running a, a billion dollar company, didn't the guy didn't wear shoes. Uh, he was just a long haired professor and really kind of struggling through life. And someone had told him about meditation and he just started meditating. And what he was doing prior to that is what most of us do is we kind of let personal fears and desires, we talked about this before in the past, you know, r running uh, or, or proving or hiding, you know, you're either letting some type of fear or desire kind of dictate your life and, and, and really dictate, are you happy or not? And uh, he was not really happy and was not really fulfilled. And someone had told him about meditation. He says, you know, I'm going to, I'm basically going to give this a shot. And he started just meditating and going to quiet places on little uh, streams and ponds and lakes and out in the wilderness and just started meditating like any good old hippie would do. And uh, lo and behold, he started just feeling happier, even though nothing had really changed in his life. But he finally just said, you know what, I'm not going to let my personal fears and personal desires and my personal preferences dictate if I'm happy or not, I'm going to let go. And, and in his book, you know, he just called it life, the universe. It was not, it, it was a religious book or spiritual book. I'll say not religious. Uh, it was not religious where he never actually said, Hey, I'm this denomination or anything else. And he might not be anything. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but you can still get something out of it, depending on what you believe in. And he just said, I'm going to let life slash God slash the universe call the shots for me and just trust and have faith. It all, really all came down to faith is really what it comes down to. So you could clearly have put the word God in there instead of universe or life or, or Jesus. And the whole book could have been a Christian book, uh, but it was very just non-denominational, non-anything. It was just, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start meditating and praying and just letting life uh, lead its path. And I'm going to follow and listen and take action. You still got to take action to make things happen. And this guy went from being someone who University of Florida, like wouldn't even hire. So he had to go to Santa Fe. There's nothing wrong with Santa Fe, but it, it is uh, more of a community college compared to uh, University of Florida right next to each other there in Gainesville, Florida. And uh, the dude, I mean, almost lost the job multiple times because he refused to wear shoes as a professor and uh, and then kind of went out and lived on the land and started getting these ideas, like these wild medical device uh, ideas and uh, and 
uh, some technology on the medical side of things, why he was meditating and he'd kind of come out of his meditation and then start taking action and built something that he himself for over a billion dollars. I mean, incredibly wild if you think about it, right? I mean, someone like that who, you know, you might even pass by uh, on the streets there at Gainesville and say, man, look at this guy, doesn't even have any shoes, long hair, not doing much with his life. And uh, and in reality, the guy was very fulfilled and was just letting life and God lead uh, lead the path. And so that was really the first book that I read that, you know, came from someone who just seemed real, right? Someone who was just being honest and saying, hey, I'm a screw up. I'm an old hippie who, uh, who, uh, who, who really wasn't doing much in life. And no one would have, uh, had, no one would have ever pointed that person to their kids and said, hey, be like this person right at the time. And, uh, and he says, you know, I just was looking for more fulfillment, more happiness and um, started just letting go, letting go of, uh, of, of everything uh, in terms of desires and, and fears and, uh, and just giving it all to kind of prayer and meditation. And so I, I started doing it shortly after that. I said, all right, if work for this guy, um, I, you know, and he just forget about selling your company for a billion dollars, just even finding more happiness and not, you know, getting so uptight about things not going our way. Cause that's one of our biggest problems. One of my biggest problems, if you're anything like me, you know, we, we have these goals we put in place, right? And these are our personal desires, right? These are our personal things that we want to do. And then fear sometimes drives it, oh, I'm not going to hit my goal. Uh, or someone's going to think of this of me because I didn't hit my goal or this happens to me. And we get so uptight and, and sometimes get a lot of anxiety um, or even unhappiness because things aren't going our way. And I said, I, I don't really want to live like that. I want to just start having a little bit more peace about it. And so I tried meditation and it didn't work at first. You know, I mean, I just, my mind was going in a million different directions. It's so tough to slow down your mind. But when you do, usually through quiet meditation, wow, so much happens. That's when, that's when those like big ideas randomly pop into your head. It's why sometimes big ideas happen at 3 a.m. in the in the morning, if it's ever happened to you, it happens to me a lot, where it's when my mind is essentially, you know, not racing anymore. I'm in a sound sleep, and then all of a sudden, boom, this idea pops in my head, almost in like the form of a dream, and you just wake up, and you're like, you know, I got to write that sucker down real quick. I've had multiple of those because it's a time where I've let my mind just completely slow down, and uh, some, you know, could say that's when you're talking to the higher power, uh, God, at some could say it's just random. I, I don't believe anything's just random like that. Uh, but I, I will say what helped me out the most was practice, right? I mean, just like anything, practice makes perfect. And something that my coach, you know, uh, I've shared the last couple of podcasts, this guy, Chris McAllister, the, my, uh, my, the CEO coach, um, one thing we do is, is a form of meditation. And he's got me going to like a safe place. So when we spend some time thinking about, uh, not, you don't have to be a safe place, but a, a place that just is a, like a, 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 no fears, there's no desires there. It's just a place that's safe for me. It's going to be different for everyone. For me, I love going out my dock. That's one of, I have a couple of different like kind of places I go. Uh, where even here, I'm in, uh, I'm in a, a room here, a little podcast room. And, uh, and I could, after this podcast, I could, you know, visualize myself just sitting down on the dock. It's a place that just brings me a lot of peace. And, um, and it's quiet down there, especially in the, in the daytime or even at night or early in the morning. And you just hear nature get up. And, uh, and that is a place I go sometimes to meditate. So one, it's, it's finding that place. And then two, even finding the ability or practicing enough where you can kind of instantly go to that place, even when you're not there in the real world and it does need to be quiet and and i think one thing i used to i I used to get kind of deflated about is i would hear like this guy in the surrender experiment michael singer he started off you know short amounts of time and at some point he would meditate for 60 minutes i mean 60 minutes i one i don't have that kind of time but two how do you even sit still for 60 minutes to me that's taking a nap a long nap (laughs) Um, and so I, I've realized that I'm not wired the same way this guy is. Maybe you're not as well. Start with five minutes, start with a minute. Uh, but five minutes for me is good. I feel like I get so much out of five minutes of just quiet 
meditation and then normally my mind will start wondering or i'll just pop up with some idea and i'm i'm ready to go take action um but here here's what i've done and uh, and i would i would urge you to try this if you've never tried meditation i know some of you have and you know said it's been life-changing for you uh, i would certainly say it has been life-changing for me and for me i'm obviously tying it in with uh with prayer but find a, a, a quiet place, a place where you know you're not going to have a ton of distractions. It, it's it can't. I love being outside personally. I felt like some of my better experiences are are outside where there's at least some nature around, not here and trucks and trains and and honking cars going by, but just somewhere outside in the nature, wilderness, forest, whatever it is, or by a lake, and uh, and just close your eyes and and do the same kind of breathing that I've talked about in terms of calming your body when anxiety hits and when fear seems to be taking over and that is in through the nose so you're inhaling through the nose deep inhale right you know four six eight seconds depending on how big your lungs are but you know a nice so that was about four or five seconds and then out through your mouth so you're holding in for a quick second then out through your mouth And you want that exhale to be a little bit longer so you can't even go six seconds on, on that one. And you do that a few times while your eyes closed. And everyone's different in terms of how you're you're kind of meditating and, and praying to God. But I'll ask God, just, hey, come into my life. Jesus, come into my life and, uh, and, and speak to me. Sometimes nothing happens, honestly. But even though I'm asking and nothing might be happening, there's usually something happening behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes I'll even visualize literally Jesus coming in to the scene with me wherever I happen to, to be. Uh, and I've had some really cool experiences uh, uh, doing that where I, I've had legit conversations that were 100% in my head, but still seem incredibly real and incredibly special. And, uh, and I'll just do that. And, uh, and sometimes you feel like you're going into like, not a sleep, but like a trance. And sometimes, you know, you're completely there and it's, it's, uh, you're very aware of your surroundings. It's always been, uh, been different, but I will say, and some of you might be saying, man, this seems goofy as can be. I certainly did, especially when I read this book, I was like, man, this guy is whack. I am not doing this stuff. Uh, but every time I've tried it and every time I've made it part of kind of a ritual in my week, my weeks get better. I'm telling you, it is wild. I would, if I were you, I would try it uh, at least for a week or so and just see what happens. I think you're going to be amazed with, uh, with just some of the peace and understanding that comes into your life. Um, and uh, I mean, a lot of the, that anxiety goes away, the fears go away. And over time, especially if you do kind of stop letting your personal fears and desires dictate your life, which usually happens when we're just running and gunning and can't stop and feel like we've got no time, we're always in a rush. That's not fun, right? I, I, don't, I, I don't think that God created us for that to be part of our lives where, yeah, that's going to happen in some cases, right? But our daily life should not always be high stress, run and gun, right? That's just, that's not fun. That's not even healthy. Um, and so if we think about it that way, it's all right. It, it, if your life's like that, if you're just a hundred percent always wired and running and gunning and, you know, life's only good if I'm just doing a billion things per day and I don't have time to check my emails or check my mail or open up boxes because I'm so stinking busy, that slow down, take a breather meditate for a while. And and here's the sad part. The majority of society is, is like that. The majority of society is not happy, right? They're not fulfilled, right? So let's talk about that, right? We got the majority of society who's too busy, right? We always have to have all these different apps and big counters and our counter has to be full and we're just so busy doing this, this, this. And it's like a pride thing where we're, especially here in America, we're showing off to everyone, here's how much stuff I've done and here's all the stuff I got done today. I didn't even, I didn't even have time to eat lunch. Like that's like a badge of honor, right? We get so much stuff going on and yet we're so burnt out and so stressed and don't even have time for ourselves or our family members. We're neglecting all this stuff because we're just so busy that's not how God intended our lives to be. That does not make him happy for us, right? He's not sitting down saying, that a boy, Joe, man, you didn't have time to even say hi to your wife today, your kids. You were so busy putting out fires and doing all these cool things in your busy calendar. 
I'm telling you, take some time out. And, and, and like I said, the irony is the, the people who are so busy just say, oh man, I don't have, I don't have time to meditate even for five minutes. My, my life's just too busy. I don't have time for that stuff. Make some time for it. You watch what happens in your life. Watch, um, watch the new opportunities that come into your life. Watch some of the fear and all that anxiety from all that stuff you think you have to get done start going away. And what happened in this book and what's happened with me, when you do take the time to meditate, you start realizing pretty quickly, it almost like boils up to the top. Here's the things that are really important that day, right? There's the book called The One Thing. What's the, by, uh, by Gary Keller, the guy, Keller uh, Williams. He says, what's the one thing that you can do today, this week, this month, this year, the one thing that's so important and is such a big rock that if you knock that one thing out, everything else becomes irrelevant or even non-essential, right? And, and many times we get so focused on these little small things and we forget the big thing. And, and that big thing is the one thing, if we just focused on doing that, then everything else would be irrelevant or even non-essential, like stuff we could just literally just ignore. And usually when I do this meditation, those big rocks, those important things start coming up to the top and I can get rid of all the small stuff, all the little noise, all this stuff that does create a lot of anxiety and stress. I just get rid of it. And I, I can tell you, and my wife can tell you, even though it, my life should be the opposite, right? With now more employees than ever and a fast growing business and, uh, you know, a you know, a, a lot of stuff going on with three young kids and a, and a wife with, with busy schedules. Uh, I, sh I should be more stressed, but I have been more relaxed than ever before in my life. And a lot of it goes back to this meditation, which has enabled me to have some really amazing conversations with myself, with God, with Jesus, and ultimately figuring out what's really important in life. What is going to be that needle mover? What is going to be that big rock that makes all this other noise irrelevant? And, uh, and I stopped, man, I just stopped caring about some of the small stuff. And, uh, and a lot of that small stuff was driving a lot of my personal fears and even desires. And, oh man, I'm going to let people down if I don't reply to every single comment and do all this. And at some point I said, who cares? And guess what? My life got better, not worse, right? People weren't mad at me. Uh, it, 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 it's amazing what happens when you just kind of let go and go with the flow, if you will. Flow equals freedom. I'm going to say that again. The flow equals freedom. That does not mean that you just go with the flow and do nothing. You still have to take action. But meaning go with the flow. Go with God's flow. God, God wants you to be in a flow, right? He did not make us, his children, to just always be out of whack and be stressed out. He wants us to go with the flow. Flow also means faith, right? So we got flow, faith, freedom, right? So you have to have some faith and some trust in God to get into that flow and realize, all right, if I, if, if I do listen to him, if I have slowed down my life to even have a conversation with God and do some of this meditation prayer, that maybe I will have some of those ideas. Maybe all of a sudden I will get more of a state of flow, which once again, equals to a whole lot more freedom, equals to more control, more fulfillment in life. Sorry, I shouldn't have said control because we're going to go with all these different um, words that start with F, but more freedom and more fulfillment. Give it a try. Uh, if you're into reading books, definitely check out that, the, the Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. Really, really fascinating. Um, I, like I said, it, 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 it completely changed my opinion on a on meditation, but I did give you a 30,000 foot view of the book. It was literally the whole point of it was crazy things happen to this guy, things that you couldn't even, uh, he couldn't imagine. He never even dreamed of. It was never even his personal desire when he let go of all those personal fears and desires and just said, you know what, I'm going to let life, universe, God, just call the shots and have some faith that my life is going to turn out great if I don't put so much pressure on myself on all these little daily things to make them all happen. And it was wild, the people that came into his life, the opportunities that came into his life when he slowed down and, and was open to accept them, right? Because if you're not catching on what I'm saying here, the people who are just so busy and always going 100 miles an hour, never have time to stop and pray and meditate, they don't have any more room 
to take on new cool things. They don't have any more room, at least in their minds, right? They don't have any more room for new opportunities or even time to listen to when things might be knocking on their door because they're so busy doing all these things. This Michael Singer dude and many others like myself who have started doing some form of meditation and prayer, when you're able to slow down like that, you're able to start being more open to the new ideas, to the things that God wants you to do. And you can start dreaming even bigger than ever before and opportunities even bigger bigger than you imagine start flowing into you versus you always just figuring out that, or you guys always, you guys, you trying to always figure out all the stuff that you have to do. Bah, 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 I can do a million different things today or I'm not gonna be successful. No one's gonna like me. That's simply not true. Take some time this week, slow it down, start realizing there's many things on your to-do list and your calendar that honestly aren't even that relevant and really, uh, really don't even have to be done this week. It is not going to make or break anything if they don't and start being more open to, uh, to that flow, to listening to God, to, uh, to having more faith and, uh, and trying to get into that, that flow state. Try it for five minutes. Go to a quiet place, do the breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, and just start listening and, uh, and trying to be aware of anything that might be coming into your life. So I love your feedback on this. If you guys currently do meditate or have tried it or have not tried it or have failed it like I did for quite quite some time, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. This will probably be a continued conversation as I'm getting into this uh, more and more with uh, with my coach. And uh, just me personally, because I'm I'm seeing the results. I'm seeing how how much calmer I've been, uh, and not getting stressed out about really much of anything. I mean, I, we've had some crazy thing happen. Even with the the hurricane, was probably the one time I did. And guess what? I was good reminder. I, I talked about in the last podcast where I finally just started getting outside and just meditating instead of thinking about all these small things I had to do to clean up this property and fix the office. I said, you know what, I'm just going to meditate. And some really cool things have happened, including just randomly a person who came into my life that is fixing a lot of this stuff at a, at a really, really cool, cool, cool rate, better than anything I could have ever had before, because I took the time just to slow down and not let it stress me out. So hope this was helpful, guys. Shoot me an email, joe at saltstrong.com, and I will talk to you on the next episode. Cause fishing. It's in my soul